And I'm well, coming can you tell me approximately how much money was missing? Was it over a thousand dollars? Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. Go to sleep. I'm okay. I'm all right. What are I? Hey, Ted. Hi, all right. Charlie? Who? What happened to you? Oh, today's going to be fun. He cut himself shaving. Three stitches. Well, it's better than wearing a piece of toilet paper all day. We were just waiting for a reaction on this morning's decision on school busing. Oh, yeah, I was listening on the radio. Yeah, the mayor will say he's not happy about it, but he can live with it. The Board of Education will say that this is the beginning of the end of education as we know it in this country. The governor will neatly sidestep it by saying it's not in his province. Now, it's times like these that I really miss that old man on the street column. That's where you got interesting reactions. I used to love that column. Yeah, me too. It was the thing I'd do to find out what Mrs. Feeney on the South Side would think about Khrushchev's speech to the U.N. Or what Harry the Toolmaker thought about school desegregation. We never hear from Harry or Mrs. Feeney anymore. You'd think they'd have the consideration to write or pick up a phone. What does the average man on the street, on his way to work, think about the issues of the day? ERA, solar energy, nude bathing in Venice. I love those columns. Oh, yeah, yeah, they were great. You know... You just sandbagged me, didn't you? Hmm? Okay, maybe we can try a man in the street, doll. All right, if that's what you want, Charlie. We can give a photographer a tape recorder, and he can ask the questions. Then he can snap a picture and run that next to the person's answer. Okay, I'll go for a tryout on a limited basis, a couple of times a week. Mm -hmm. I'll put Animal on it when he gets back from the hospital. Was he shaving, too? He's covering the Children's Orthopedic Hospital. General Baruja's wife wanted to see it on her L.A. trip. She built a hospital back there in Malagua, I think. It gives her something to do while the general's making sure the trains run on time. Who else do we have down there? Billy and Margaret. We have a reporter named Margaret? No, a publisher. Oh, yeah. Enjoy it, Nino. We have 156 hospital beds. We have a new exercise pool. And 10 full-time physical therapists. That's where we're behind. The hospital complex I sponsored has all the best equipment, but we can't get the trained staff.
When you get well, you come and visit us in Malagua. Who are you? We're students from Malagua. You go to university here? Yes, yes. We came to show our support for La Mandita. Si, ¿Sí, muchacho. Viva, viva La Mandita. Viva. Mrs. Pinchon. Now I owe you a tour of our hospital. Oh, I'd love to visit Malaga. Don't be surprised if I take you up on that very soon. You'll be a personal guest of my husband and me. He's going to run. Five books. I'm going home to change. Wait a minute. Oh, come on, Lou. I feel icky. Yeah, I want to talk about our follow-up on this Malagua business. Oh, great. More Malaguans. Can't we talk about it later? No, no. I want to talk about it now. I want to know where we're going with it. Why don't you let her go home and change? I don't see a neat bit jump all over this story anyway. We'll just carry it as far as it goes. You've got guys dressed up in paper bags. You've got the wife of a dictator. I just don't want to give this a lot of press. Okay? Yeah, but Charlie... There's always a demonstration when one of the Baroja shows up in this country. A pro-Baroja demonstration? No, that's a new wrinkle. Yeah. Okay, so we got pro-Barojas and anti-Barojas. An animal! Come here, is that the hospital stuff? Yeah, yeah. I'll do. Pretty dramatic, huh? Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What's this? Uh, I only got up to the protesters' cars. They were driving away. I uh, thought some faces might turn out, but... Uh... Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've got a pretty clear picture of the license plate. Trace it. Maybe you can get an interview with the protesters. Wear a raincoat. <laughs> Terrific. Rossi? Nice work. You know, it might put things in perspective if we also run a sidebar on how General Burrow has got his trade delegation here buying military jets. At the same time, he sent the little woman out to visit children's hospitals. Not bad, not bad. Put Rosenthal on that. You'd use a napkin when you eat. I want you to do a follow-up interview with the Pro Baroja students. I saw most of the Pro Baroja group getting on buses. The Laguan College students getting on buses? And some people complain about cross-town busing. You know, as a matter of fact, it struck me as kind of weird. All of them coming together. What was the bus company? Or one of the small ones. Did you get it? Uh-uh. Oh, you know it, you know it. Its logo was that bird. That bird, that seabird, you know, the one with the, with the skinny legs and the pointy beak. Vulture. <laughs> Vulture bus lines? Flamingo. No. Sandpiper. That's it. Uh -huh. Oh, it was a flamingo what you did. I did not. I did a sandpiper. It was a flamingo. It had to be. Maybe it was the red hair. I think it was a pointy nose. I'm going home. Hello. I'd like to talk to someone about your charter buses to Los Angeles. <laughs> Charlie, it's 
thought this was over with. Yeah, so did I. Malagua. Oh, yeah, that's out there, isn't it? About 20 miles. Isn't that the place they have all those used car lots? That yeah, guy I know got himself a good deal down there in his RV. Now, hold it. You are sure this is the bus that came down from Los Angeles yesterday? Yeah, but we cleaned the buses. We didn't find anything. Look, it was a brown wallet. It had all my credit cards, and it had 40 bucks in it. Did that ever happen to you? No. No. Must have fallen off on the way back. Of course, when you dropped us off back there, you know, uh... You weren't on the bus from the base, not with that long hair. The base? Hey, who are you? There's only one military base around here, right? I'm not telling you anything unless you clear it with the office. Yeah, a man in your position has to be careful. You didn't lose any wallet, did you? I don't know what your game is, buddy, but you better beat it. Yeah. Listen, thanks for all that help. Mr. Vargas, I traced you through your license plates. And then when I called you at the university, the international house said you'd be here. Look, I know you were at the demonstration at the hospital. I saw you there. I don't think so. I don't think you've seen anybody. Because I read that those people wear masks. You're from Malagua. You don't deny that. What are you trying to hide? I'm writing an article. If you don't want to give your point of view, okay. But we are talking to the other side. You're from the Tribune? That's right. I'll call you. Maybe. Hey, Lou. Mm -hmm. What do these things have in common? Star Wars, Charlie Brown, The Beatles, All in the Family, The Washington Post, and the L.A. Trib. They all make a lot of money except the Trib. They're all banned in Malagua, among other things. That's kind of an honor. This is the classiest list since the White House enemies. What are you doing? Well, when I tried to interview that protester I traced this morning, I realized how little I know about Malagua. I don't mind being a little ignorant about the facts, but being grossly ignorant is embarrassing. So, you come up here to study, and uh, are you pretty isolated? I mean, is it work, work, and more work? Well, a uh, motor fighter plane is very complex, so it's a lot to learn. But uh, we play football, um, soccer. Oh, and there are dances sometimes. What about travel? Do you get to see much of the States? Do you ever get up to Los Angeles? <laughs> we went to Las Vegas one weekend, huh? We almost lost a plane, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, weren't you up in Los Angeles yesterday? I thought a bunch of guys from the base went up there. Uh, that was not for sightseeing. Uh -huh. We thought maybe when they came by yesterday morning and told us to put on our civvies that we were going to get to see the town. But the trip was just for the afternoon. So you didn't know you were going until yesterday morning? Well, no. Uh... Yes, yes. Uh, that is, we wanted to. We knew uh, La Madita would be coming. We wanted to show support. Uh -huh. yeah. So you chartered a bus and, uh, and drove up there posing as students, huh? We are students. Military students, but you wore civilian clothes. We always do off duty. Isn't that expensive, chartering a bus? Oh, we didn't charter it. That was Guillermo Blanco. He's a businessman who lives in Woodland Hills, but he's a true Malawan. Businessman hired a bus to ship you all up there. Look, you're getting this all wrong. Most people support General Baroja and what he's doing for our country. A few guys make a demonstration. It gives the wrong idea. Yes, we went up to show the other side. Yes. So, uh, what's your favorite American food? Pizza. So saying, the First Lady of Malagua moved on to downtown Los Angeles for a meeting with the mayor. Johnny, Bonsi dug up some interesting dope on that demonstration. Children's Orthopedic Hospital was marred by Charlie? demonstration. Madame Baroja has been warmly received. I was just checking out the new anchor man at Channel 6 brought out from Detroit. I knew him as a kid reporter. Should have stayed a newspaper man. 
So what's Senor Baroja up to today? Who knows? Who cares? Anyway, uh, Rossi found out something interesting. The pro Baroja students at yesterday's demonstration were air cadets who came in on chartered buses. She pay for it? No, it was some fat cat from Malagua lives on the valley. Okay, you said, if you want. Huh? Then we got an interesting sidebar. We thought we'd show... How much space are we giving Chiquita Banana? Or whatever cutesy name they call it. What's the matter, Charlie? What's bugging you about this? Hey, it's just not my kind of story. I think I should remind you that Mrs. Pynchon finds Mrs. Baroja her kind of friend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the social elite of this country has a tendency to get sucked in by these people. I believe one of our respected universities gave the wife of a Middle Eastern tyrant an honorary degree. I seem to recall some very nice people being cordial to Madame Nu. Remember her? When she was going around talking about monk barbecues. Mm. You got that memo about the cocktail party Mrs. Pinchon is giving for her friend? I don't know. I guess I didn't. We can't ignore this Malagua thing, Charlie. The other papers won't. Thanks for the journalism lesson, Lou. Now, why don't we just put out our newspaper? Malagua? That's that drink with the tequila and the salt around the glass. My boyfriend has two of those, and he gets, uh... <laughs> Are you going to print this? This is the way that they do it. They grab people on the streets. They hold them without bail, without trial. Mariano was just coming out of my cousin's house when they picked him up. My cousin risked his life getting these pictures. Is Mariano still in custody? Or worse. Who else has seen these pictures? Lots of people. They watch. They say they'll get back to us. They don't get back. 25 Avenida de los Flores. One of the security police's safe houses. You know, three people who have been tortured there. This is the way that they send Miguel Azuela back to his family. Who is he? The editor for the opposition newspaper. Then there are opposition newspapers. But it's a little hard to run them from a jail or from a grave. Azan was held by the security police for three months. He can tell you. Him and his wife Carolina were arrested on March 2nd. Was that this year? Yes. Uh, they grabbed us on the street. It was a Saturday. We were going out to the bakery. They covered our eyes with black bands. And we were driven in a car. Then we were separated. When I saw Carolina again, she won't tell me what they've done. But the police told me. They wanted me to know. They uh, started questioning her. And when she didn't answer, they told her that in a few minutes, their hands began to roam over her body. She would sing like a nightingale. They forced her to take off her skirt and stockings and tied her hands and feet to pegs. They began to beat the soles of her feet, saying, We make everybody talk. Do you think you're different? Then they attach wires and run electric current through her body. Her whole body and head Choked terribly. The front teeth started to break. They held the mirror up to her and said, Look what's happening to your pretty face. There were five or six men doing this. They beat her with truncheons, taking turns until her feet and legs were so swollen she couldn't stand. She fainted, and when she woke up, she was lying on a pool of dirty water, 
and her own blood. They... They brought her back to me. That night she died. So she escaped the torture. And I was glad. <laughs> I was glad that my wife died. Oh, what was the charge? Why were you arrested? We wrote songs. Songs? One particular song we wrote was about a bird and how free it was. They said it had subversive implications and, and that it was getting too popular. The government of my country is afraid of a song. <clears throat> Margaret, I want you to meet my nephew, Juan Luis, one of the worst playboys at UCLA. Ah, bendita. I am one of the best playboys at UCLA. <laughs> <laughs> he is really an excellent student. I'm delighted to meet you. Thank you. I think your aunt's a remarkable woman. What does your uncle think about her speaking out for women's rights? He doesn't mind. As long as I see that his socks are washed and his breakfast is ready on time. <laughs> How enlightened. <laughs> Charlie, maybe you ought to take it easy. We should be moving around. Oh, yeah. We're missing all this stimulating conversation. Come on. You're the one who's supposed to be good at these things. I don't know anything about making small talk with first ladies and bodyguards. All right. Let's make small talk. You cook the chicken slowly. That's the secret. It's a combination of the Spanish style and the Indian, which is why it has become our national dish. I tried it once. It almost burned off the roof of my mouth. <laughs> yes, we like our dishes sharp. Except the gruel. That's very bland. That could use a few peppers. Uh, may I introduce Mr. and Mrs. Charles Hume? Charlie is managing editor of the Tribune. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. What is gruel? I thought that was a national dish, too. It's what they serve every night as a specialty of the house at El Hotel. Which hotel? El Hotel. It is a nickname for the federal prison. Charlie, please, honey, let's... Uh, Come on, let's go, Charlie. Charlie. I don't understand. Doesn't matter. Let's just talk of news from Malagua. How is my colleague Rogelio Diaz, the managing editor of La Prensa? I don't know Rogelio Diaz. You wouldn't like him. He's a very abrasive guy. We never agreed on anything. He's feisty. I guess maybe that's why your husband's security police picked him up two months ago. But I'm warning you, don't. Don't bring him to trial. He'll talk your head off. Hey, Charlie. Charlie. By the way, how many people are detained without trial at El Hotel right now? I don't know. Well, who's counting? Anyway, the names are charming, aren't they, senor? El Hotel, El Hornillo. I don't know what you mean. El Hornillo, the hot plate. Not for warming chicken. Now, it's the one they use to make prisoners talk. And the hobby horse, the caballitos, the hobby horse. It's, it's a toy that the police make the prisoners ride. And ride, and ride. And you're in the hobby horse. Come in. Yes. Where's Mr. Hume? He didn't come in today. It's the first sensible thing he's done. Look, Mrs. Pinchon... Are we... you going to try to defend what happened last night, Mr. Grant? I can't defend it. Still don't know what happened. What happened is I hosted a reception to honor the first lady of a foreign country. And my managing editor publicly humiliated her. Embarrassed her in front of all those guests. Charlie obviously feels strongly. That... I don't know what Mr. Hume's personal feelings are, and frankly, I don't care. Common decency to say nothing of protocol in this situation demanded he keep his mouth shut. I was embarrassed for him. I was embarrassed for her. My Lord, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, other people have made the same charges against the Borough House. Oh, yes, we've all heard them. I've served on international committees with Amanda Baroja. And I know her to be one of the most decent, intelligent, and generous human beings I've ever met. Do you think I'd be friends with a torturer? There are a lot of things that aren't making sense to me right now. 
Rossi found out that the pro Baroja students who showed up at the hospital were carted in. Charlie Hume doesn't care two cents for this story, gets crocked at the reception and goes, hey, I mean, Charlie Hume? Maybe you'd better find out what's going on. Mm. Well, you knew that I, uh, I did foreign for a while back before being an editor for the trip. Malagua? Yeah, I covered a lot of Latin America. Malagua was part of it. I was back when the present Mrs. Baroa was just a teenager. The old man was still on his second wife at the time, the one who went on a sailing trip and never came back. Yeah, I remember reading about it. But you probably don't remember reading about an American reporter who was detained for five weeks in a Malaga prison. No, I don't remember that. It must have been in the papers. The news media were being patriotic at the time. Those were the days when we didn't want to offend our allies against communism even if our ally was a two-bit dictator. And it was a big trade deal in progress. We needed their tin, zinc, bauxite. You were the reporter? Reporters get jailed. I wasn't the first, certainly not the last. It wasn't a turning point in history. What had you done? My job. I'd interviewed some of the dissidents who were opposed to the Baroja government, and I'd filed a story. That ticked off General Baroja. They arrested me outside a restaurant. They took me to jail. They wanted me to sign a statement saying that I was some kind of a subversive, linking me with the dissident so that they could discredit my story. They kept me there five weeks. They didn't really harm me physically, but, um, you know, they weren't stupid enough to treat me like their own political prisoners. But uh, they interrogated me every day. What information could you have given? I couldn't give them any information. They just wanted to intimidate me, to make me a, an example for other newsmen. They succeeded. I, I, I could hear what was happening to other men around me. I could hear their screams. They, these guys that had me, they were, they were crazy men. I mean, they, they made me believe that they were going to kill me. For five weeks, I thought that each day was going to be my last. And uh, they like to, to play jokes. Jokes? See, um, they uh, staged uh, fake executions. They'd, uh, they'd take you right up to the final moment. I was so scared, Lou. I, I was just so scared. I mean, they, they came into my cell. They fired a gun to show me that it had real bullets. And they put it to my head. And before I heard the click of the empty chamber, I lost control. Wet my pants. I broke. You know, we all walk around thinking that we have something called humanity. It disappears so fast. Bravery is gone in five minutes. Dignity is gone in ten. Humanity lasts maybe an hour. You look into yourself and you see something that you don't really want to see. You never told me. Well, I never even filed a story on it. <laughs> you don't go bragging about being a coward. Oh, uh, weren't the Malaguans the ones who were demonstrating out in front of the hospital the other day? That's right. Yeah, well, what I want to know is, how come we pay for these kids to come over here and study out of our tax dollars? And then instead of studying, they have all these demonstrations. Answer me that. I'm not ashamed of paying for the buses. It's not a secret. You didn't make it very well known either, so look. <laughs> Who was I supposed to tell? Look, Mr. Rossi, I am proud of Malagua. My motives are clear. What you should do is find out who's paying for the protesters. Why do they need somebody to pay for them? They came in their own cars and their own initiative. <laughs> I am sure if you print that, you're going to make a lot of people very happy in some foreign capitals. Are you saying that these students who are on American scholarships are getting paid by Moscow or Peking or Havana or who? No, I didn't say it. You did. But you implied it. Now, are you making that charge or only innuendos? Did you go around and ask each and every protester if he really was a student? 
I understand American universities are hard, very hard. I mean, real students are supposed to be in class or reading books. They don't have time to parade around with bags over their heads. You don't believe that any of the protesters were Malaguan students? No, I do not. You don't feel that legitimate Malaguans might have something to demonstrate about? Like the fact that such a demonstration couldn't even take place in Malagua. <laughs> you know, Mr. Rossi, there are things that you as an American cannot understand about my people. The U.S. has been very good to me. And Malagua has also been good to me. But what's more important, the Malaguan government has been good for her people. What about the charges of the abuses of civil rights? <laughs> you see, you do not really understand us. A leader in my country must be strong, El Caudillo or he will not have the respect of the people. But look at what has been accomplished. We have come forward 100 years in just 10 years. You do not emerge out of the jungle in 10 or 20 years and become a modern industrial society without sacrificing something. Like freedom? <laughs> you know, Mr. Rossi, some of the democratic things that you have here, we cannot afford yet. The nightmares had stopped. Then they just started again. With the Baroja visit. He has some idea. He acted like a coward. Ah. I know, I know. But what can we tell him? What are we going to do? Just... Oh, you're still here. Good. Listen, you can do me a favor. I, I wrote my resignation when I got in last night. You can take it to the tower when you go back. So that's what you were doing until 3 in the morning. Oh, come on, Charlie. Mrs. Pinjon didn't say anything about resignations. And you know I won't take it for you. Take it or make me mail it. Either way. What did you do? I haven't thought about it. You can freelance. Sure. Write articles for magazines, for Sunday papers. I used to talk about doing that someday. Getting away from daily journalism. Well, maybe that someday has come. Well, I'm going to give you a first assignment, J just to get you started. How to grow prize-winning roses? <laughs> no, th th this wouldn't be for the garden section. I'm talking about what happened in Malagua. Your experiences as a victim of the Baroja policies. Forget it, Lou. You've been bottling it up for 15 years, Charlie. I said forget it. It's still inside you, Charlie. Write it. You think by writing it would help somehow? No, no, no. I'm not worried about you. I just want a good story. Nice try, Lou. Mail it yourself. Where did you get this? There's no byline. Micromouth for It's good. It's powerful stuff. It's pretty inflammatory. You're not suggesting that we go with this story right now, during the Baroja visit? That's exactly what I am suggesting. I don't think this is the time to go with the story this controversial. I don't think so either. We're dealing with a government that's extremely sensitive to its public image. <laughs> what country isn't? An inflammatory story right now could screw up the aircraft sales to Malagua. And that means Southern California jobs. 
Besides, this thing happened about 15 years ago. I think it's arbitrary and a value judgment to go with this story now. Their first lady is here. Now is when it will have its most impact as a story. Lou, our own survey proved that most people don't even know where Malagwe is or what it is. And they don't care. Then we should tell them. Look, Lou, not only is it editorializing, but... Oh, hey, come on, you guys. This isn't an editorial. You're being protective about a country that tortures people, that puts newsmen in jail. That stuff's still going on today. Nobody's in favor of torture here, Lou. Oh, good. Okay, Malaga was a cesspool when it comes to political freedom. But when you holler human rights, they slam the door. The dialogue has ended. All chance of reaching them is gone. We've been reaching them 15 years. What's changed? The standard of living, for one thing. And they have let some people out of jail. And why go now with the story of one little country when there are other countries that practice torture? Does anybody know how many countries regularly practice torture political prisoners? There are over a hundred. That many? All right, then. Why Malagua? And why now? Especially when printing a story like this could be damaging. Because somebody's got to start somewhere. Let's just leave the whole thing out. This must be some kind of record. They're planning to go at it all night. Well, they better decide soon what's going in the newspaper. All we'll be throwing on people's doorsteps are giant doodling pads. Hey, 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 hey. Look. But this is a story in importance. Charlie, how do you feel? Hi, Charlie. Hey, good to see you, Charlie. You probably should have stayed away, Charlie. This is a good one to miss. Lou's got this Malaguan story. Yeah, I've seen it. I was just saying that I'm very uncomfortable about imposing our values on a very different culture. Maybe they haven't got our kind of democracy, and maybe they don't even want it. Look, for some, the most basic human right is 800 calories a day, enough food in the belly to sleep at night. We're not telling them what to do. But as journalists, we should be telling our readers what's going on. In one tiny corner of the world. And we're getting so moral where it isn't even our business. I think if it's happening, we should be writing about it. It's time to make a decision. I think I made it when I decided to come in today. We go with the story. this Charlie Hume oh my god yeah all these years there was never an inkling you never told me either when do you propose to run this tomorrow tomorrow of course. Thank you for giving me so much time. To do what? Talk to Amanda Baroja. Let her know this is coming out. Is it our policy to clear stories? She's my friend. Someone I respect. I want to warn her that my newspaper is about to print something that might just break her heart. Let's go. Let's? I'm not going to do this lousy job alone. The source for this article is unimpeachable. But the author is talking about 15 years ago. Ancient history. These things don't go on today. Our information is that they do. The press censorship, jailing of people without trial, torture. Mrs. Pinchon, I live there. I am not convinced. Senora Baroja, it is possible that you don't want to be convinced, that you don't want to know the truth. Mr. Grant, if you could show me that these charges were true, then I don't know what. But you can't, you see? We wouldn't be printing these charges if we couldn't substantiate them. I'm so sorry. I know how much this hurts you. Do you? I know you wouldn't have anything to do with any of this. But still, it does go on. You haven't convinced me. If I could confront my accusers, I would show you. But I know that my country won't get a fair trial in the United States press. I think we had better say goodnight now. Senora Baroja, when are you leaving the city tomorrow? 12 o'clock, noon. 
Would you be willing to come to my office tomorrow morning early? Let's just say goodbye now. If what you said is true, if you really want to confront your accusers... I said I did. I'll be in my office at eight. Come on in, this way. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, may we talk privately in my office? No, it's very lucky. It's not me. They're unarmed. They won't hurt you. They didn't want to risk being identified. They felt it could lead to their imprisonment. You are Malaguans? Yes. Students? Yes. Well, you have learned something in the United States. Public relations. This certainly makes a nice show. We're just glad for this chance to talk to you in person. We know that you mean well and that your predecessor meant well. But when she spoke out, she went on a sailing trip and was never heard from again. I do not fear my husband. What I fear most is this kind of ugly propaganda. People are being killed back home, senora. They are being tortured and killed for speaking out. This is not what I call confronting my accusers face to face. Of course you wear bags over your heads, so you don't have to take responsibility for your lies. How easy it must be when you hide your faces from the world. Don't believe us, dear. Look around when you get home. See for yourself. Let's go. May I come in? Of course. I received your resignation in the mail this morning. I read it right after a letter offering me five dollars off on my next engine to now. I threw the resignation in the trash, but I saved the coupon for the engine tune-up. Never know it might come in handy. So might my resignation. Oh, Charlie, this is so awkward. I'm so sorry about what happened to you. Well, a long time ago. If it had happened while you were working here, the trip would have backed you up. Well, my paper did what it could do. It couldn't run my story because I hadn't written it. Now you have. Trip's running it. I was awfully mad at you, you know. I can't blame you. Don't rush off. Hope we haven't missed it. 12 o'clock news. Senora Baroja's farewell comments. It has been a full visit and a productive one. Thank you. Will you comment on the Los Angeles Tribune article on human rights violations in Malagua? No, I would not. Well, do you know what reaction it had in Malagua? No comment. Will you be taking a copy of the story back with you to show to your husband? No, I will not. Gentlemen, ladies, I have to catch a plane. I would just like to say thank you to the United States, in particular, for giving educational opportunities to the young people of my country. I am proud of our young men and women who are studying science and government in the United States, my own nephew among them, in fact, who I hope will someday return and hold important positions in the government of my country. I believe in them. Thank you very much. Well, what do you think? Referring to the students, was she talking about her husband's air cadets? Or was she talking about the protesters? Well, you heard her go out of her way to favorably mention her nephew. Yeah, that's true. Knowing her as I do, I'd like to think she was affected by what went on in my office this morning. I'm sure she was. 
Levy.